And then the lights went out, like the dying heartbeat of a little girl. It was like a stranger had a key, came inside my mind, and started moving my things around. I don't remember much, but I woke up some time later to a more enlightened inner self that I hadn't felt in a long time. Time, what a fascinating concept. So much time. People waste so much fucking time caring about their own status. I am Aaron's isolation addiction. Nobody gives a shit about the clothes we wear, the fancy restaurants we dine at, or the tuition spoken words that ooze from our lips like a rusty sink. We buy things we don't need with money we don't have to impress people we don't like. Eat, consume, conform, repeat. It's like society molds us into some ugly, stitched together abomination. Well, fuck that. Fuck what they want. And I say be your own fucking Frankenstein. Whoa. Talk about a tangent. It does piss me off, though, when people use their belongings as a status pedestal for themselves, like their own pat on the back. Like, let's take video games, for example. There's a library of thousands of games that go by rarity and sometimes goodness and not-so-goodness. But people will take out loans and shit or sell their souls for these interactive pieces of plastic. But instead, they don't entertain themselves with it. They fucking, they'll spend a fortune on a box. It's a box. Oh, I'm gonna fucking, instead of buying a car, well, you don't need a car either, but I'm gonna fucking buy a box. Yeah, I'm gonna complete my collection of a box. These are games to be played with, not to be displayed and never touched. I am Aaron's... Ah! I am Aaron's splitting headache. Fight Club. A fantastic coming of ages film and book about true masculinity, anti-consumerism, and basically a wake-up call to a society that seems to always want to keep us beaten down. The movie changed my life. I remember leaving the theater and immediately wanting to stop my own fight club. I mean, come on, who didn't? But for those of us that didn't, I got good news for you. They made a video game adaptation. Take the Fight Club premise and apply it to a video game. How could they go wrong? Let's find out. Well, let's begin with the game's story mode, I guess. If you thought it would follow the film at all, maybe let you play as the narrator, you know, Ed Norton's character, and guide him through his quest on self-discovery and enlightenment, guess again. Nope, you play as some random throwaway character that you get to name, but that's about as far as the customization goes. Yeah, so our random character just goes on some mission to stop Tyler, I guess, from enacting you know Project is. Mayhem, interacting with characters from the film along the way, or something like that. Who cares, just watch the fucking movie, or read the book. But, yeah, the game's plot, uh, I really have no idea what's going on. And that's just one thing that pisses me off. So here's two more. Take a look at the game's thrilling cutscenes. Yep. That's not me doing any pause editing cuts or anything. There's zero animation or action. Remember the Aquaman game, anybody? Well, this game follows the same bland formula. But Fight Club's cinematics have one big improvement over Aquaman's. The character still shots actually talk to each other. Holy shit. The dialogue is ridiculously and painfully dull. Here, listen. What are you looking at? I'm looking for Tyler Durden. I want to join the club. Yeah, fuck off. We're not taking applications from losers. Ho ho ho, you sure told him, Jared Leto. The other thing that pisses me off is that every fight so far has been mainly that. Just a fight. No objective, just kick the shit out of a guy and then move on. Until we meet Chemical Guy. Who? They couldn't have thought of a better name? Or even an actual fucking name? Like Dick, Harold, or Phil? 
Nope, it's just Chemical Guy. Anyway, we're supposed to break Chemical Guy's arm, and the game won't let you progress unless you meet that specific condition. Only one problem. How the fuck do I do that? It didn't give me an on-screen prompt before the fight or anything. Alright, so let's check the instruction manual. Hmm... I don't know, I don't really see anything in here. Alright, so you'd think to pause the game, it'd bring up a move list or something? Nope. You have to exit the entire game, go to training mode, which is the only way to view your character's moves. How the fuck does that make sense? How fucking long is this move list? Where do I even begin to look? Who can remember all of this shit? I haven't been this lost since fucking Karate Champ! Alright, fuck this! Looks like it's time to ask the internet as usual. The internet should be referred to for like, tips and tricks, not general necessities of a fucking video game's dynamics. What a piece of fucking shit! Anyway, turns out you press X and A or Y and B together when your opponent's health is in the caution state, and that's how you break their limbs. Ugh, it's about fucking time! The game shows a painful x-ray effect when the bone breaks, kinda like in the Mortal Kombat game from a few years ago. Alright, now we can finally fucking move on, back to story mode. Still no idea what's going on. He doesn't know. He has no idea! You really have no idea, do you? Is this game seriously fucking with me? don't, do you? Predictably, the last boss is Tyler who's really the narrator, who in the book and film goes mostly unnamed, until it's revealed he's actually Tyler, though he refers to himself in the third person as Jack, hence the quotation marks around the name Jack in the game. Side note, in the book it's Joe, not Jack, in case you care. What the fuck, I just confused the shit out of myself. Never mind, I'm sorry. It makes sense if you're a fan of the source material like myself, Speaking of which, I probably should have said a spoiler alert, but eh, fuck it. What do I look like? Someone that gives a shit? <laughs> and here we are at the credit scroll already. That took about 15 minutes, including the 13 minutes it took to break Chemical Guy's fucking arm. I am Aaron's splintered patience. So after that, the game... Fred's been unlocked. Fred who? No. No. Fred Durst is in the game? I hate Fred Durst! Way back in the early 2000s, this bro was on top of the music scene with his band Limp Dick. I mean Limp Biscuit. What kind of a name is that anyway? So anyway, I read in this interview in a magazine years ago that this idiot was shitting all over Marilyn Manson and Trent Reznor from Nine Inch Nails. Two of my idols. Yeah, I know, explains a lot about me. I'm ashamed to admit, at one time, I owned one Limp Biscuit album. And after reading that interview, with him bashing everyone, I went outside of my parents' house, smashed the CD into the ground, and then urinated all over it for the next few days. I don't have anger issues, I swear. Come to think of it, I also remember Fred Durst being in a WWF SmackDown game from ages ago, and I went out of my way to change all his moves to, like, girly attacks and animations, and all he had was this, like, bitch slap attack, rendering him useless. Who the hell does something like that? I never said I didn't have issues in general. Alright, back to Fight Club. There's plain old arcade mode where you play as whoever you want, like Raymond the Veterinarian, Jack's boss from his insurance job, and what the fuck? Abraham Lincoln? Oh, from the scene where Tyler tells Jack he'd kick Abe Lincoln's ass. That's fucking funny as hell. Interestingly, many of the film's cast reprise their roles for the video game. Even Meatloaf. Like a bat out of hell! One strange thing I gotta note. There's no in-game voices or any vocal interactivity for the fighters, yet the characters move their mouths as if voiceovers were originally meant to be implemented, but the developers forgot to put them in, so instead the characters just mime like idiots. 
Why spend the money to bring all these actors in and not use their voices during gameplay? I am Aaron's increasing urge to throw something across the room. I've already touched on how there's a shit ton of moves for each character, but I usually just find myself mashing buttons or using the same combos over and over because the brain dead AI lets it happen. Speaking of attacks, if you want to check your character's move list anywhere during gameplay, you guessed it, gotta go all the way back to training mode because it's nowhere else to be found. Fucking asinine! Come on! This was around 2004-ish, and with plenty of other options for fighting games out at the time, it's pretty hard to recommend this turd. You'd probably have a better time fighting yourself. <laughs> The film and book were brilliant social commentaries that used brutal violence as a metaphor for layers of deep undertones within the story about a generation raised to worship mass commercialization as a parenting role. Obviously these were overlooked and ignored by the general public and media outlets who chose to instead focus solely on the violence. And sadly, that's what this game chose to do as well. It's almost some fucked up twist of fate. The game used its subject matter as a marketing tool to lure consumers in. Well, they missed the point, and a few other things. It's as if they said, eh, it's about fighting and clubs and stuff and men fighting. Yeah, there you go, Fight Club the video game. Just another shallow, empty, licensed cash grab. We all may be from the same compost heap, but as gamers, we shouldn't have to stand for this type of electronic fertilizer. I am Aaron's rebellious vocal cords. Yeah, yeah, I know. Don't talk about Fight Club. Be like Groucho Max. This club, you don't want to be a part of. Tell your friends. Tell all your friends to stay far, far away. Don't ask questions. Just go all Project Mayhem on this piece of shit. Ha 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 